Amazon shares up 11 percent following its blowout quarter. The company's call is underway. Let's go back to Josh Lipton, who can give us some highlights from what's going on. Josh. So on the call, David, uh, no surprise questions about AWS, the company's cloud computing business, its profit center. Uh, it showed a better than expected uh, performance in the quarter. Uh, on, the, on the call, analysts having some questions about the strength there, um, asking executives with those dollars added, would there be anything they would call out specifically on workloads or regions? Um, executives saying, listen, when it comes to AWS, what you are seeing in their opinion is just broad-based strength. They continue to add new products and features. They are adding more to their sales and marketing teams. We know they're investing in the business, that their product set, they say, leads the market, and that they add to it faster than the competition, and they are continuing to expand. Of course, we also saw rival Microsoft report better than expected numbers, too, this week. Another question on the call, analysts have these executives, what driving the upside to that revenue guidance? Um, their executives saying, in part, listen, very strong holiday performance, a big uptick in response to that one-day availability. Prime, very strong, too. Remember, they gave us that new bogey, 150 million uh, paid Prime members. Members. More people joined Prime in Q4, they're saying, than any quarter before. David, back to you. Okay, Josh, thank you. Let's get more on Amazon's Big Beat. Joining us now is Jared Weisfeld. He's tech sector specialist for Jefferies. Nice to see you. What, uh, what stands out for you from this quarter and sort of what could be a read perhaps more broadly as well? Sure, absolutely. I think you hit the nail on the head earlier in the show. When you look at the strength in Amazon's quarter, there was significant investor fear on two aspects. One was the slowdown in AWS over the last three quarters. AWS has decelerated each quarter. So I think there's been competitive fears that Microsoft has been gaining share on the margin. So posting that 34% year-on-year growth rate in the current quarter was definitely better than expectations. And then I think the earlier point was, was spot on. When you look at Amazon over the last, call it nine to 12 months, ever since they announced the reinvestment into the business to facilitate one day overnight shipping combined with reinvestment in AWS, the stock has lagged pretty significantly. If you were to look at Facebook versus Google against Amazon since they made that announcement, Amazon's lagged by about 25% on a relative basis. So to finally see potentially coming out of this investment cycle is why the shares are rallying right here. So when you look at the Q1 guidance for operating income, significantly above buy side expectations. And I think that's partly attributable to the fact that we're now lapping the last possible quarter for reinvestment. So when you look out to calendar 2020, I think investors are hopefully optimistic that we're now at the point where you get the best of both worlds, decelerating growth from an operating expense perspective, combined with potential acceleration in the core metrics such as paid unit growth, which accelerated to 22% in the quarter. So, Jerry, we, there's so much focus on the expense side, as you said, and there's been so much focus on, ex, on shipping. Um, yeah. And again, you know, whether they're getting into FedEx's business or not, but shipping costs were up 43%. Yeah. Give us your, your, your take on where that goes. Is that, is that a number that's going down? Is it going higher? Yeah, I think over time, it's all about the incremental gross profit dollars or the operating profit dollars that hit the model. So even while you have the ability for them to invest in the business, which is clearly weighed on operating income in the past, and that's dampened CSOI or operating income growth, the fact that they've now invested in the business so heavily has facilitated to the point where, facilitated growth where three quarters ago, year on year paid unit growth was 10%. And that escalated to 18 to 22. So yes, it's been a headwind from an operating income growth perspective, but hopefully you're now lapping that to the point where unit growth can continue to accelerate. So Jared, when you look at the stock, a couple of different issues here. So do we not worry about AWS deceleration anytime going forward? When does AWS become a commoditized business instead of just with the competition of Microsoft and Google? Yeah. When do I worry about that? And C, do I ever worry about any other metrics involving in Amazon other than AWS? For sure. I think it sort of depends on the investor that you're talking to. Tech investors are keen to 19 focused. more questions? No, that was just three. But he, he speaks really well and rattles them off really quick, so I figured I'd just throw them all out. For him. sure. Um, so tech investors keenly uh, are focused on AWS growth. And if you look at the consumer retail investor, they're looking at the core GMV, the core retail play, uh, marketplace. So from an AWS perspective, it's clearly the profit center for the company, earning almost 30% operating margins when your international business is barely break even. So I think that's a really important segment to focus on. And yes, you do have to worry about deceleration, but I mean, at some point, it's the law of large numbers. These guys are doing t almost $10 billion a year, a quarter in, uh, in AWS type revenues. So yes, it's decelerating. But at the end of the day, if you look at cloud workloads in, in its entirety, the biggest trend over the last three to four years has been the migration of public workloads to the cloud. And that's the the sole reason why IBM bought Red Hat. So you're seeing the transition there, which makes a lot of sense. So if you believe that that workload uh, acceleration is going to continue, then yes, there's competition on the margin between Microsoft and Google with their GCP efforts. But, you know, rising tide lifts all boats. And at the end of the day, I think every single competitor in this space is really looking to maximize profits while delivering value to their customers. And I think the market's large enough. 
See what I meant, Tim? That was good. You nailed it. No, I mean, yeah. I, he could have answered that. Stuck the landing. Kerry <laughs> strugged it. Kerry <laughs> strugged you. it. Thank, Thank you so much. Was did it hurt? You did it hurt? That's <laughs> great. Um, AWS, I mean, what, what, you know, if 9.2 billion in operating income growing with 34%, profit margins are quite strong. What would you give us a multiple if that was out there as an independent Tim company? Tim mentioned it before. I mean, what does that have to well, be? It's got to be low 30s, I would think. I mean, yeah, so I, I think the, the street tends to, and I wish he was still here because we could actually bring him back to talk about it, but he's gone. <laughs> um, 10 to 11 times revenues on, on AWS, you know, and that ends up being about 70% of your valuation. So um, people who are, you know, I think, Certainly, Amazon is a blended valuation of sorts, and that's one way to do it. 